Welcome back. Last time we talked about lenses and apertures and how cameras like this produce images like this. But there's something a bit odd about this image. This bug is almost as big as a tree. This is actually a property of perspective projection. That's the type of projection that pinhole and lens-based cameras create. Closer objects appear large relative to distant objects. More precisely, objects get scaled by one over Z. To make this more precise, let's get back to our scene. The viewpoint of our camera is at the center of the lens. We'll call this point the center of projection. It's analogous to the pinhole of a pinhole camera. Let's set up a coordinate system where Z points perpendicular to the image plane and Y is up like this. A point X, Y, Z then projects to negative X over Z comma negative Y over Z. We can make this even simpler by moving the image plane in front of the center of projection. This exposes the image right side up. And while it's physically impossible to build a camera this way, the math works just fine and removes the negative sign. There's another way to represent this projection using homogeneous coordinates. Remember in our affine transformation video, we talked about a clever way to encode transformations by adding an additional coordinate to our point vectors. A big advantage was that it lets you perform translations with a three by three matrix. Up until now, we've assumed the third coordinate is one, but it doesn't have to be. If it's not one, all you do is divide the vector by the third coordinate. And this is equivalent to performing a perspective projection. You can think of homogeneous coordinates as having a pinhole camera built right in. This makes the math for perspective projection really easy. Here's a scene point represented in homogeneous coordinates, and we want to apply a perspective projection to produce this image point. So you first apply this matrix, which strips out the fourth coordinate of one. Then you convert from homogeneous to image coordinates, which divides by Z. This matrix is called the perspective projection matrix. The cool thing about representing projections as a matrix is that it's a piece of cake to combine it with other transformations. For example, suppose you want to move your camera forward one half unit. That's equivalent to moving the scene back one half unit. This is a translation Z, which you could write with this matrix transform. And we can combine this translation with our projection matrix by multiplying them together. Because it's hard to keep track of all these numbers, let's just use the symbols P for projection and T for translation instead. These two matrices multiply each scene point to produce our image. We can also add in a rotation matrix R that reorients the scene relative to the camera. And maybe we want to rescale the image at the end. If you multiply them together, you can express all of these transformations with a single three by four matrix. That's pretty cool. And it makes it faster to compute projections. Okay, let's take a closer look at this image scaling matrix. It has a nice geometric interpretation. If we double the distance to the screen, it doubles the size of the projected image. The image is magnified by two times. But you can also see that the image is getting cropped because there's not enough room to fit it on the screen. This is like selecting a subset of the image and restricting the camera's field of view to just this part, and then zooming in. Notice that when you double the magnification, it cuts the field of view in half. Now, if you want more magnification, you have to make your camera even wider. This is why telephoto lenses are so big. You have to move the image plane far away from the optical center. And we can also make the image smaller by moving the image plane closer to the center of projection. But why in the world would you want to do that? It increases our field of view. I bet you didn't even know this airplane was up there above. I hope you've enjoyed this video on projection.